Hello and welcome to MBKM Models. Today we're going to talk about the V1 Flying Bomb. The V1 Flying Bomb, Vengeance Weapon, was an early cruise missile and the only protection aircraft to use a pulse jet for power. Its official Reich Aviation Ministry designation was FI-103. It was also known to the Allies as the Buzz Bomb or Doodlebug, and in Germany as the Kirschkern, Cherry Stone, or Maykaffer Maybug. The V-1 was the first of the so-called Vengeance Weapons series deployed for the terror bombing of London. It was developed at Peenemunde Army Research Centre in 1939, by the Nazi German Luftwaffe at the beginning of the Second World War, and during initial development was known by the codename Cherry Stone because of its limited range. The thousands of V-1 missiles launched into England were fired from launch facilities along the French Pas de Calais and Dutch coasts. The Wehrmacht first launched the V-1s against London on 13th of June 1944, one week after the successful Allied landings in France. At peak, more than 100 V-1s a day were fired at South East England, 9,521 in total, decreasing in number as sites were overrun until October 1944, when the last V-1 site in range of Britain was overrun by Allied forces. After this, the Durham directed V1s at the point port of Antwerp and at other targets in Belgium, launching a further 2,448 V1s. The attacks stopped only a month before the war in Europe ended, when the last launch site in the Low Countries was overrun on the 29th of March 1945. As part of operations against the V-1, the British operated an arrangement of air defences, including anti-aircraft guns, barrage balloons, and fighter aircraft to intercept the bombs before they reached their targets. While the launch sites and underground storage depots became targets for Allied attacks, including strategic bombing, in 1944 a number of tests of this weapon were conducted in Tornio, Finland. According to multiple soldiers, a small plane-like bomb with wings fell off a German plane. Another V-1 was launched which flew over the Finnish soldiers' line. The second bomb suddenly stopped its engines and fell CD down, floating. In 1939, Paul Schmidt and Professor Maedelung sub submitted a design to the Luftwaffe for a flying bomb. It was an innovative design that used a pulse jet, while previous work dating back to 1915 by Sperry Gyro relied on propellers. While employed by the Argus Motor and Company, Fritz Goslau developed a remote controlled target drone, the FZG-43. In October 1939, Argus proposed Bern Fuhrer, a remote control aircraft carrying a payload of one ton that could return the base after releasing its bomb. Argus worked in cooperation with C. Lorenz AG and Arada to develop the project. However, once again, the Luftwaffe declined to award a developed in 1940. Schmidt and Argus began cooperating, integrating Schmidt's shutter system with Argus's atomized fuel injection. Tests began begun in January 1941 and the first flight made on the 30th of April 1941 with a Gotha GO-145. On the 27th of February 1942, Goslau and Robert Lusser sketched out the design of an aircraft with a pulse jet above. The tail, the basis for the, for the future V-1. Lusser produced a preliminary design in April 1942, P-35 effort, which used gyroscopes. When submitted to the Luftwaffe on the 5th of June 1942, the specifications included a range of 299 kilometers, 186 mi miles, a speed of 700 kilometers per hour, 435 miles per hour, and capable of delivering a 5 kilometer 500 kil kilogram half a long ton warhead. Project Fiesler FI-103 was approved on the 19th of June and a site signed codename Kirschkin and cover name Vlatzai Garat. 76 FZG 76. Flight tests were conducted at the Luftwaffe's uh, Coastal Test Center at Kalschen Peenemunde West. Milch awarded Argus the contract for the engine, Fiesler the airframe, and Ascania the guidance system. By the 30th of August, uh, Fiesler had completed the first fuselage, and the first flight of the FI 103 V7 took place on the 10th of December 2 when it was airdropped from an FW 200. Then on Christmas Eve, 
speed, the V1 flew 900 meters, 1,000 yards for about a minute after a ground launch. On the 26th of May 1943, Dessert Germany decided to put both V1 and V2 into production. In July 1943, the V1 flew 245 kilometers and impacted within a kilometer of its target. The V1 was named by Das Reich journalist Hans Schwartz van Berkel in June 1944 with Hitler's approval. Power plant. The Argus's Pulse Jet's major components included the nacelle, fuel jets, flat valve grid, mixing chamber, venturi, tailpipe and spark plug. Compressed air rather than a fuel pump forced gasoline from the 640 litre, 170 US gallons, 140 imperial gallons fuel tank through the fuel jets which consisted of three banks of three atoms. These nine atomizing nozzles were in front of the air inlet valve system where it mixed with the air before entering the chamber. A throttle valve connected to altitude and ramp pressure instrument controlled fuel flow. Schmidt spring control flap valve system provided an efficient straight path for the flaps momentarily closed after each explosion. The resultant gas compressed in the Venturi chamber and its tapered portion accelerated the gas creating thrust. The operation at a rate of 42 cycles per second. Guidance system. The V1 guidance system used a simple autopilot developed by Ascania in Berlin to regulate the altitude and airspeed. A pair of gyroscopes controlled yaw pitch while azimuth was maintained by a magnetic compass. Altitude was maintained by a barometric metric device. Two spherical tanks contained pressed air at 6.2 megapascals, 900 pounds per square inch that drove the gyro. Operated the pneumatic servo motors controlling the rudder and elevator and pressurized the fuel system. The magnetic, magnetic compass was located located near the front of the V1 within a wooden sphere. Just before launch, the V1 was suspended inside a compass swinging building. The, there, the compass was corrected for magnetic variance and magnetic deviation. The RLM at first planned to use a radio control system with the V1 for precision attacks, but the government decided instead to use the missile against London. Some flying bombs were equipped with a basic radio transmitter operating in the range of 340 to 450 kilohertz. Once over the channel, the radio would be switched on by the vane on the counter and a 120 meter, 400 foot feet aerial deployed. A code did more signal unique to the V1 site, transmitted the route and impact zone once the radio stopped transmitting. An odometer driven by a vane meter on the nose determined when the target area had been reached, accurate enough for the area bombing. Before launch, it was set to count backwards from a value that would reach zero upon arrival at the target in the prevailing wind conditions. As the missile flew, the airflow turned the propeller and every 30 rotations of the propeller counted one number in the odometer. This odometer triggered the arming of the warhead after about 60 kilometers 30 seconds. When the count reached zero, two detonating bolts were fired, two spoilers on the elevator were released, the linkage between the elevator and servo was jammed, and a guillotine device cut off the control hoses to the rudder servo, setting the rudder in neutral. These actions put the V1 into a seat. While it was originally intended to be a power dive, in practice the dive forced the fuel to cease, which stopped the engine. The sudden silence after the buzzing alerted alerted listeners to the impending impact. Initially, V1s landed within a circle of 31 kilometers, 19 miles in diameter, but by the end of the war, accuracy had been improved to about 11 kilometers, 7 miles, which was comparable to the V2 rockets. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Please don't forget to subscribe and until next time.